Amen. Amen. So, you know, I learned this song, New Year's Eve, and I just want, I'm hoping that everybody knows it so that you can sing it along with me. It's been in my spirit, and it's truly the desire of my heart this morning. I don't have any music, so I'm just going to um, sing it, I guess, a cappella. Um, let's see. <laughs> Take this stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied. Just to see you glorified. So take this stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. If you know the song, please stand. Take this stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. To take this stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified one last time. So take this stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated in the house. We just thank the Lord for another Sunday morning. We thank the Lord for bringing us together. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. Amen. 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 I got a, um, a, a message here from our prophetess and prophet. It says that what they're hearing from God today is that God says, my grace is enough. I would rather prefer you are lost or Oh, I'm sorry, that's not lost. I, I didn't think I would say that, but okay. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would rather, I'm sorry, prefer that you are hot. There's no lukewarmness in my grace. Uh, give, up to, give up to your calling and be bold. Fear is not your portion. Amen. 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 We received the word of God this morning. Amen. Amen. Fear is not your portion. Amen. Amen. And this morning, the word of God today is taken from Isaiah chapter 60. And uh, when Sister Kenny came up and she was reading uh, what she brought earlier, I was like, girl, you are in my message. You are in my message. I thought, well, you could always, you know, preach it. I'm okay with that. You know, I don't know if sometimes you find yourself always trying to get out of the assignment that God has given you. You, I don't know, you try to get a cough, sprain leg, anything just to kind of, just to get out of it. But in the name of Jesus this morning, we stand to hear from the Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to hear from the Lord. So Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Isaiah 60 verse 1. And I often read from the King James Version. I mentioned that this is how I was brought up. It's not, you know, like most of us Jamaicans think that it is the only word from God. We think that is the original word from God. And so every other NIV and message and, you know, all different translation is just man-made. But this is the word of God to you this morning. <laughs> From Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. And it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. Amen. Just one verse. So that means I'll be quick for those of you who have an appointment. We will be quick this morning. <laughs> Amen, amen. Isaiah 61, arise, shine. I'm reading it again because I'm hearing the word of God. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amen. Thy light is come. Thy light is come. You know, reading the Bible, it's so fascinating, and I, I, I often give a little bit of a background to a text because I truly believe it adds context, and when you know what is happening, it, it, it gives you a different perspective, and, and so it is in reading the Bible. There's always, you could read a scripture a thousand times and find a thousand different things from that one scripture. A preacher can preach from that same scripture a hundred times and find a hundred different messages from that one scripture. And the, 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 the point of that is you cannot exhaust the word of God. It doesn't matter how much you think you know. And sometimes it is difficult to preach scriptures that is familiar to people because they think they know where you're going with that and they think I've already heard it. And so you're always fighting something that they do know to implant something that they should know. So here it is this morning. I'm asking you to unload yourself with what it is that you already know, and just open up your spirit and your mind to what the Lord is saying to us this morning. So whatever God is saying, this is new. His word is fresh. There's a rhema word. There's something that you will hear right now that you might have heard before, but it didn't really, it didn't stick as much, and it didn't have as much relevance, because maybe at the time that you were, you heard it, it didn't really affect you to the point that it will now. So do not dismiss and don't get into the habit of thinking, oh, I know that, and then just script. Read every word, line upon line, precept upon precept, because there's something in it that God wants you, 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 not your neighbor, not somebody else, but the light of his glory. It's the, it's the word of God coming into you this morning. So open your mind to hear what God is saying. So it's amazing, as I mentioned, that a preacher can preach and get something different. The book of Isaiah, it's a powerful book. It's an Old Testament prophetical book. And so I'm giving just a little bit of background what I wrote, and it gives a picture of what's happening in Israel and also a picture of what Israel should expect in the future. So Isaiah was a mighty prophet. He, was, he saw things happening or coming to pass 700 years before it actually did. He was way ahead of his time. It's what we would use in our phrase, phraseology as he was bigger than life or larger than life. So his book is considered amongst many scholars as the fifth gospel. Did you know that? You didn't know that, so there you go. 
Christ. You learned something new this morning. He's considered the fifth gospel because he spoke so much about New Testament things. He talks about the Messiah. He talks about the Messiah's crucifixion, the Messiah's birth, the Messiah's burial. He saw way down the line of time. So when you read this book, he goes from the present to the future because that's the mind of God. God is not stuck in the present. He's also taking you to your future. Amen. Amen. So there are, in the, the, the book of Isaiah, there are 66 chapters that are broken down similar, similarly to the compilation of the Bible. So in the Bible, there's two sent to text or two will we call testament. So there's the Old Testament and there's the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there are 39 books that makes up the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, there's 27 books that make that up. Now, Isaiah, the whole book of Isaiah is, it, it correlates to the whole scope of the Bible in that in the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, it talks about judgment. Similarly to the Old Testament, there's a different dispensation. He talks about the law of, of the things to come. And then in the New Testament, where from verse 40, where we would say from the, in the last 27 ver, um, chapters in Isaiah, you talking about them, the Lord taking them out of, of, of captivity and bringing them into freedom which is what we would ascribe that to the New Testament. Here is the new will. Here is my desire for you from here on in. So we're living in a time where people have disregarded God. They have forgotten God. So this is what Isaiah was um, talking about. He's talking about the trouble of the time, a nation that is in trouble economically, a nation that is in threat of war. Can, can we identify with that? A nation that has gone far away from God. Can we identify with that? A nation that is, that is doing everything to keep God out of the mouths of people and more so our children. Can we identify with that? So this is a direct correlation to a time that was, but a time that is right now. I don't know if you guys follow the news, but just this week, the Senate had passed a bill that has changed the language of our anthem. So they've taken out for all thy son's command to all of us command. So they want to go to a more gender neutral way because now what they're doing, and, it, and it's very sleuth, and sometimes we seem to think when the enemy comes in, he's going to come in with horns and 666 written on his forehead. But that's not how he does it. He does it in a way that it seems so, so it's not threatening. What's so wrong with that? We all want to be included. So what's wrong with all of us command? But we understand that this nation was built on God. This is not just somebody who decides to come up with the word. This was specifically given and prayed upon. And this, it's been 20 times I read in, the, in that article, 20 times that they have actually tried to get this thing changed. And finally, here it is. So we are living in a dangerous time. We're living in a time that is requiring for us to take note. This is not something that we should just let go by and, and, and not think about it. And we, we have to be alert. We have to be aware. We, we were in a, 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 a pastor's prayer meeting yesterday, and at, a, at the end of it, we, we got together, and a part of the conversation is we got to know what's happening in the world. Sometimes we live in, in such heavenly places that we forget to be relevant in the earth. If you don't know what's happening here, how can you affect change? You have to know what is happening. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savor, if we lose our effectiveness, how can the world be changed? How can you dismiss and disregard what is in the world because you're so heavenly minded, but no earthly good? We're here to make sure that when laws are passed, they consult us. That is the impact that we are called to. We're not just called to come to church and gather amongst like-minded people, but we are called to be, to, to, to walk among people that are unsalted and, 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 and insipid and create a taste and a flavor and a change because God has called us to flavor the earth. We're not here just to do what we want, and we're not here just because we don't want to make trouble and, 
and we just want to be seen and not heard. It's the time to be seen and heard. It is the time to be seen and heard. Amen. So the, 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 the people have gone away from God. They have forgotten God. Again, so what, as I mentioned in before, Isaiah flipped from the past and the present. And so you'll, you'll see me doing that because I want for us to understand that there is nothing new under the earth. The good thing about it, whatever was, now we have a reference. Now we can see what they did to make the change, and we can copy that and emulate that so we can actually make that change yourself. So when the Bible says that all scripture is given as inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, for doctrine, for correction, is right in righteousness, this is something that we have. We have a blueprint. We have the answer key. So we don't have to try and come up with some gimmick and try to figure out what can we do and what will work and do you have an idea? This is our idea book. This is our idea book. So the people were divided. They have broke tradition just like in the church today. We can look around, we can see the empty seats. People are not coming to church anymore. People would rather stay home and they will rather watch TV or watch um, service on TV. But the Bible implores us because he saw this way down the line. He knew that this was coming and he knew that this would be happening. And so what God has said in his word is, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. We are not ignorant of the fact that we all have individual personalities and sometimes we don't always clash at the beginning. We don't always mesh at the beginning, but that's not the point. This is not about your comfort and your personality and who you like and who you don't like. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together because one, at least one person in here you can get along with. Can we agree with that? We may not be able to agree with everybody, but at least one person. And if that one person and you can join together, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name and touching anything, there I am in the midst of them to bless them. So we know that if you come and you found your one friend, there, there is a church right there. There is an, a, a situation that invites the presence of God. But traditionally, where people would come to church and raise their children and their grandchildren in the fear of God, we don't see that anymore. It's called apostasy. It's called a falling away from the truth, a falling away from, from the, the, the principles of God. And now we have inputted and, and, and used our own language to, to replicate or to, not to replicate, but, but to, to substitute for what the word of God says. Because everything now, you, you notice that even when preachers come up here, they're so afraid to speak the unadulterated word of God for fear of offending people. We have to be tiptoeing through the word like, like, like walking through tulips because, you know, people are so sensitive these days. Their heart is so fragile. It's like they're paper people. We can't speak directly to people, the mind of people anymore. And so therefore, we're staying on our sin. And we cannot require. God is requiring more of us. And so what you have to do is to listen and embrace the whole plan of God for yourself. It's not just taking what you like and dismissing what you don't, but this is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Here we are, just like Isaiah was, preaching to a people that has disregarded what God is saying. And see, the thing is, when you continue to dismiss and disregard what the word of God says, he always keep you enslaved. Enslaved, whether it's through economic crisis, bad relationships, poverty, there's something that you're tied to, enslaved to emotions. I hold on to these things and, and we refuse to, to let him in. But the moment you, you adapt to it, the moment you, 
you grab onto it, the moment you agree with it, is the moment that he takes you out. Because you, you see, you have to understand that God is sovereign. He's not trying to find a way to make it work. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He already says that. So you don't have to go around trying to find what else can I do? The longer you take to fall under the word of God, it is the longer it is for you. It's almost like when you have a child and, and you're disciplining them and, and you put them in timeout and you say, you're going to stay here for five minutes. Well, I don't believe in timeout. But for those of you who do and, and did that sort of thing and put your child in the corner and said, you got two minutes and they kept coming out every 30 seconds, what ended up happening? Their timeout become longer, right? Because if you said five minutes, it doesn't mean two seconds, then you leave, and then, no, no, no. It means it starts again when you disobey, right? So when you come out at two minutes, it's not like you have three minutes left. I'm going to start the clock all over again. So this is what God is saying to the people of Israel. If you listen to me, the sooner you get my word, the sooner you, 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 you agree with what I'm saying, is the quicker that your, your captivity will be over. So I speak about when I was a child, and I, I wasn't the, the best one of us. Um, I got a lot of beatings because I didn't listen. And we're not talking spanking, we're talking anything that's not bolted down would be my mom's weapon, okay? <laughs> that, that is what I grew up under. But you see what ended up happening? After a while, I got accustomed to it. And so then it becomes a challenge for me, you see, because I, I kind of got that way about me. Um, I don't really like subscribe quickly to things. I have to figure it out first. It gotta make sense to me. But you see, for those people who are like me, when you do that, you're actually extending your punishment. Um, sometimes for those of you who walk into blind faith, just, just go along and then you learn it as you go away. That's probably a better system. But for me, I wasn't like that. I have to sit and I got to figure out, is this um, the right way? And if it was the right way, do we dismiss? Do we deduct from that way to get this way? How did you get this exactly? You, you got to go around. And, and, and that's how I operate my life. But it didn't, like for an adult, that's okay because I, I know when to get off the bus or when to kind of just, just give it up already, July. So I didn't just move on with it. But when you are a child, which is what the Bible implores us to be, unless you become as a little child, there comes a point when you just have to listen because you know the person that is leading you knows more than you. He has been this way before. And if he says, do not, there's something in it that he knows that I don't know. So if the Lord is giving me a, a, a lesson and, and, and instead of me sitting there trying to figure out, I don't know, you know, um, I think I'm going to try it first and then see if he was right. I'll advise you not to. I think it's better that we just obey because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. So the quicker we can obey is the quicker we can get on to the rest of our lives. So Israel knew that. And, and so there is a shift when they start to recognize that God knows what he's doing. The thing about God, he's a, a, a loving God. And a loving parent discipline their children. You don't let them walk off the, 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 the edge of, the, of wherever and then so that they can find out for themselves that what you were saying all along was actually right. A loving, a loving parent say, you know what? What you're doing is wrong, and so I'm going to hook you. I'm going to hook you back. And so when you can just... Relax into that, knowing that there's something about this that he knows that I don't know. It, 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 it creates a better situation for you. So God has done that. So for 39 chapters in the book of Isaiah, he, he brings judgment and he continues to warn them and continues to, 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 to bring different situation on them that they would realize that what he says he means. You see, sometimes we tend to forget that he is Jehovah Jireh. And so then what he does, he creates a situation so that you can know for yourself that he truly is Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. Sometimes we forget that he's Jehovah Shalom. And so then what he does, a whole lot of drama started happening. So then you can really recognize that he is the God of peace. Yeah. So you don't always have to challenge it. 
But if you feel the need to do that, God will and can create situations so he can prove himself in your life. But on the other side of God, he is a loving God. He is the God that, that will show you the, the comfort inside of him. And here it is in the other scriptures. In the second portion of this book, it changes and switches from judgment to comfort. And in Isaiah 40, do you have that scripture ready for me? Isaiah 40, from 1 to 2, says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for her trouble. So this, there's a shift now. He took them out of Babylon he took them out of Babylon where they were there for 70 years and now he's saying, I'm going to bring you out of captivity. So here is a time of restoration. Come on, tell your neighbor, restoration. Restoration. This is what God is saying, restoration. God never leaves us into a disciplinary situation for too long because once you have learned the lesson, the shift comes. The quicker you learn the lesson, the shift will come. So once you agree with him, he brings you out. And the longer you reject him is the longer you stay in the pit. So here we are in Isaiah. He's talking about arise in chapter 60. He says, um, he, pro he prophesied that this is the time of their, their lives are going to change. So when he, he sends the word to say arise, this is not... A, a, a question of do you want to arise it is a command arise and so you may be thinking but I don't have what do you mean how can I I've been I've been bowed down for so long I have been living low I've been crouched and bent over and so many things have come upon me I don't have it in me to just get up but the word of the Lord to you today is arise because intrinsically, in the word of God, is the power to do what he's asking you to do. This is a word of empowerment. So you don't have to sit there and try to figure out, how do I do this? What do I do, Lord? What lessons do I take? He's, if he's telling you to arise, it's because there's a shift. There's a change in your situation. That should excite you, that something about your situation is going to change. And it may not be that, you know what, you get the job that you've always wanted and, 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 you know, whatever it is that you have that has caused you to feel so low for so long, it suddenly changed. But what it is, it's a shift of mind. It's a change in mentality. It is, I saw it for so long, I fed into that particular mindset for so long, and it did me no good. But now, you know what, I'm going to shake myself. I'm going to get up from where I am. And I know a lot of times we think that there is some magic. You know, if we were to bring somebody in here and, 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 and let them prophesy to you, prophesy to you and, and tell you all sorts of things, and you, you are sometimes eager to believe somebody else than the word that is already inside of you. If God is telling you to arise, it's because he's put it in you to get up from where you are. There is no magic. It's called faith. Amen. That's good. Faith. Yes. Yes. What we have done as Christian, we have disregard the simplicity of the word of God. Sometimes we think it should be harder than that. It's got to be harder than this. So if the Lord said to you, the word of God implores us to believe. The first principle of Christendom is if any man come unto me, or if any, the, the scripture that says, um, we must first believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Belief is the foundation. Faith is the foundation. It is the currency of the kingdom of God. You can't find another substitute. It is as simple as it sounds. Believe. Attach yourself to, to, to the word of God because he says, shine illuminate 
What he's saying in the, in, in, in the original is that he said, for the light is come. Because what, what it is, is you, you, he's causing you to be a light. Yes. You will be illuminated. Because there is a purpose for you to get up. You have laid long enough. You have been discouraged long enough. You have been complaining long enough. You have been sad long enough. It is time to shake yourself and to get out of that state. Amen. I know when we are down, you know, we have these sad songs that we play, right? Nobody knows the trouble I see. Right? So we, we like that because it's a good feeling. We get over on it, right? People, we, our situation invite people to come in and to ask you, are you all right? Are you truly okay? You sure you don't need anything? And, and for, for those people who are truly mourning and, and do need that lift and do need that encouragement, absolutely. Yes, go to them and be that encouragement for them. But for those of us who have, have piled on the, that spirit of, of doubt and fear and, 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 and have been captive in our minds because we refuse, it doesn't matter when the light comes in, we would rather pull the curtains down and cover our heads because there, there's, we are getting something from it. We don't want to admit to it. It feeds a particular emotion. And I'm not being insensitive to the people that are struggling with, with things that sometimes they are clinical depression. And, 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 and if it is that you need to be treated for that, then, then absolutely seek the help that you need. But I'm talking about a spirit, a spirit that has come upon you that you are refusing to, to break out of. Even when the word of God has come to shine light into it, to show you that it is time to break out. Even a chicken, when it's time to hatch, has to free themselves. We can come and lay hands on you and speak in tongues and, and do all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, it is up to you. sent a word for you this morning to say, get up. It is because he knows you have the power in you to get up. Yes. Don't sit here and, and wait for people to give you a hand out or a hand up. Sometimes you have to raise your hand up to extend and ask for help. It's not always that someone's going to come and offer you help, but when are you going to say, w w can somebody help me? Because that shows that you are proactive. You want to change. You're, you're tired of this now. I don't want to do this anymore. And I, I talk about sometimes the prayers that I pray. They're very real. I don't, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I understand church and church customs and, and churchiness. But sometimes you got to say, God, it's me with my dirty heart. I don't know God. I can't stand that person. But Lord, I got to see them today. You got to find a way to help me to, to live with them. That's how I pray. That's how I pray. My struggles, I know they're not unique to me. I know that. But it is easy to come and to hold up hands and hallelujah, hallelujah. And, 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 and nothing bothers me. We're just saved and sanctified and, and just going to heaven together. I mean, that may be true, but some of us are going to get there a little later, okay? Because we're going to deal with a little more things. And the things that I'm working on, it's not just about, you know, just fornication and adultery, but I'm talking about those things in my spirit that corrodes my mind. And when I go to bed, the flashbacks that I get that I'm God, Lord, just take this thing out of my system. Free me from it, God. I know it should be, I should be over this by now, God, but I'm still struggling with this. And God, I want to break free from that. That is me. So in your prayers, pray for me. Since you are okay and you're well on your way to heaven, I'm grateful because that's where I'm trying to get to. But I want
want real. He wants real. Real worship. Enough with this fake stuff where, you know, oh, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to say it because I don't want to really kind of, I know you come to the house of God and I'm not here to be off-putting. But really what it is, he says the time was and it is now. I demand true worshipers. True worship isn't about ceremony, isn't about having no offense, but everything ends at a certain time and then we go to the next thing. It is about a heart that is broken before God. Broken before God. That when you come in here, it is you and your God. It's not about anybody else. If you want to take my worship and let it be your table talk, go for it. But if I have to lay before God and say, God, why God? When, why? It's not right. It's not fair. It's not this. It's not that. The things that are inside of me, when I leave this place, I don't want to leave with the same garbage that I come in with. I want to be free. I want to be light. I want to get rid of them. I want to make sure that God hears my heart because now he can take them to the Father, Jesus can take them to the Father, and then I can get my aunt and the prize answered. I don't have to sit there and wait on somebody to just, to, to be all holy. Real worship. Until you become the sacrifice. It's not about putting something else on the altar, but you become the sacrifice. When you are so melted before God that you become like ashes, there is nothing left in you. You are nothing but light. He can blow you over and you're ready to bounce back. That's what he wants when you come up. In, 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 in the Old Testament, when the priests would go and they would, they would and not until the smoke and that, 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 that the, it hits the, the, the mercy seat, not until that point was there really a smell. God wants to smell you. Not the pretense you, not the Chanel you, not the cover up with Febreze you, but the you. fakeness. We are living in a time when the world is making headways and God is calling the church to advance. How are we going to advance when we're struggling with this, the little things that we should be able to get over by now? If you can't be real before God, how are you going to go out there and attack a real devil? You tell me, because I'm trying. How do you attack the devil that will stand in your face and tell you, no, two men can get married. Yes, two women can get married. Where, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? This is the world that we live in. This is why we are brought to the world. The Bible says that light has come into the world and men rather darkness than the light because their deeds are evil. When you stand in your workplace, when they are cussing like sailors, how do you react to that? What do you say to that? If you can't be real, where it doesn't really matter what, we're so concerned about me, myself and I, and my comfort, and to make sure that I am satisfied and everything is all right with me and I'm good, that we, we're not willing to get out of our comfort zone. Last week, I was watching the Super Bowl, and at the end of it, for those of you who are watching, at the end of it, you know, they were interviewing the, the Eagles, and they were talking, and the coach and a couple of the other players, they were saying, first of all, I want to give glory to God. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. That thing impacted me so much. So much because I'm thinking here are these guys they have a platform they have a stage that they could say anything they could thank their mamas like well, you should thank your mama really but I'm just saying you know not just not only did they thank their mamas I'm sure they did but but they took that opportunity to highlight God how many of us have been given the stage to say something and then we ask for God give me an opportunity. I want to be a minister of the word of God. I want to be effective minister in the, in the kingdom of God. And when you get the mic, what do you do? 
you are muted. The Bible says that we hide our light under the bushel. We refuse to light up. We refuse to shine. We have this, this low wattage Christianity of none effect. What effect are you? What are you doing with the gift of the spirit that God has given you? It's not just for you to shaka and rama and roller, but really what difference is the spirit of God doing in you in your workplace? Are you a closet Christian? If homosexuals are so free to come out of the closet, why can't Christians be free to come out of the closet? <laughs> Who would have ever thought that we would be living in a time when Christians are in the closet? Really? We're so accustomed for other people. Everybody, I mean... Being in leadership and some of the things that I am required to do. And I'm like, God, I don't want to sell out for an extra $5 on my paycheck. They give you these diversity things. And the diversity is not even about, you know, the things that we would naturally think. Once upon a time, diversity was about ethnicity. It's not about ethnicity anymore. Diversity is about inclusiveness when it comes to your sexual preference. And so they are telling me that I have to now, being in a leadership position, go and stand and walk with a flag to say I support this because my company, one of the, 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 the things that we pride ourselves with, her value, is diversity. And I champion that, but it means something else for me. But they're now trying to redefine it for me. And so now I struggle with what do I do? Do I stand and be counted for what I believe in and suffer the consequence of that? Or do I just join the line, go along to get along, just not to ruffle the feathers? What do you do when you're called to arise and shine and to, to bring attention? Because when you are shining, the light is on you. You better have something to say. So all the time where you were praying those prayers, those deep prayers, here is the mic and here is your stage. What do you say to that now? What do you say? Do you just all of a sudden forget that you have something and, oh, I'm just going to join course with everybody and do what they do? No. This is your chance. We say that God... I will live for you, and we better be careful of the things that we promise God when we're feeling all right. Because when, when our spirit is light and we're feeling good, and man, and we can go down, and, Lord, I love you, I'll die for you, I'll do anything for you, Jesus. All right? You may think you don't mean it, but God meant he took you seriously. And so now he gives you a platform not amongst like-minded believers, but you're going to be among vipers and serpents. And now you have to take the position. What do you do? What do you say now? Here is your light. You have been illumined, enlightened. You have insight to information that the world needs. Are you going to sit there and be, and, and, and be overtaken with fear? Are you going to cower under the pressure of what will they say? Or am I saying, thank you, Jesus, I finally got an opportunity to speak your word. Those guys out there who said, you know, first and, and foremost, I want to give glory and honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus. See, it's okay to say God because everybody recognizes that there is a God. But, but we want to make sure that we don't just say God. We want to be definitive. We want to make sure that we say our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In an effort for us to be elusive sometimes, we, we talk in, in terms like, you know, uh, 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 um, the creator. We don't want to take a step. But God is calling us this morning to take a stand. Take a stand. 
There are people out there that are dying, that are, you know, sometimes in the church we see the seeds and we wonder where are people. People are, are shifting beliefs and they are running to Eastern religions and they are <clears throat> joining up. Who would have thought, again, one of those, mm -hmm, that in the Western world, we would see blonde hair, blue-eyed people joining up with Islamic nation. Who would have thought of that? Yeah. Downtown Calgary, they come to recruit your children. We have been so, so, so out of it in thinking that all of this stuff happens over there. But it is right here. In a grassroots, so together conservative nation that we don't even want to offend anybody, so we'll change two words to make it all right for everybody. It's happening here. But you see the good news about that? The Bible talks about in the last days what will happen. As much as people may be leaving, and I can acknowledge that, but God is also opening the doors for a flood of them to come in. Because people are looking for answers. And how many of us knows that Jesus is the answer to the world today? Amen. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. Amen. We can speak emphatically about that and be convicted at the fact that this e we are in the truth. We are standing on the truth. Jesus. Don't ever apologize. For the fact that you're living a life that you've been called to live. You're called to live above the world. You're called to live as a, 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 a different from the world. Don't feel the need to be liked by everybody. That's right. the, the church is to be a counterculture of the world. Whatever the world likes, the church automatically should dislike. No? Automatically. Light, darkness, light, darkness, light, darkness. They cannot, one dispels the other. Light dispels darkness. When we go into the world, light has come into the world. And yes, in, in, initially they're going to bar away from it because it's too bright. But let your light so shine. Let it so shine. Let it so shine before men that others may see your good works and come to glorify your Father. Because this is what it's about. It's not to bring the attention to you, but it is the light of his glory. Because when the glory comes, something about it has to change. It changes our circumstances. It changes our situation. The gospel was what wrecked the, 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 the church in, in, in the book of Acts. It is the gospel that is preached into the world that would change the world. Yes. Don't think that we are here to make a different gospel. That what he gave us is not enough. It is enough. Yes. Speak it as he gave you. Don't apologize. If you're, asked, if you're saying, God, just help me to have the courage to, to say what you, what you want me to say, then let that truly be, you know, go before God and continuously, he will give you that desires of your heart. He has given you that desire to pray that prayer is really what yeah, it's saying. Yeah, yeah. You didn't just come up with that on your own. He will give you what to pray for because he wants you to be that change agent. When, you know, I was talking to some of the pastors, and I was saying that being in the bank, this is the, the, the currency of the world is money. It is the things that open and close this door. And now when the pastor was the one who pointed this out to me and says, you know what, you are, God has positioned you that you are in an area of influence. The church, we are here to influence the world. And a lot of times we sit and we, we, we are muted because we feel like we don't have anything to say. But in your area, in your job that you work at, God wants for you to, to do something there. Other than take home a paycheck, there's more to your ministry than just, or more to your job than just a paycheck. So when you show up, have a purpose. My mind has so changed for my job. I was talking to Len and I was saying that, you know, I so wanna, it's like, I don't know what it is. If um, 
I don't, I don't know, I don't think it's just emotion, but I really was just so affected by, by these guys. And I thought, God, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. How many of the people on your job know who you are? Not just that you are this black girl or black guy or some person, but really, do they? Do you really have impact on the job? I'm not, and I'm not in any way giving anybody permission to go and be a troublemaker because I know that that's the far side that we can take this thing to and start beating people over the head with the Bible. I will never tell anybody to do anything like that because we have to be wise as serpents, right? When you walk into a situation, ask God for, let me be cunning. Give me an opportunity, God, where I could just slide in, where they can see and how is it that I don't hear you cursing? Well, you know what? You know, if you did curse, you know, I just, I used to curse, believe it or not. No, not me personally. And I'm not apologizing for that. I'm just saying, as an example, if people are coming up to you and asking you, why are you so different? And whatever that difference is that they point out, Here's an opening for you to now introduce Jesus. However you do it. It doesn't have to say, well, I'm a Christian. I guess, okay, you can start with that. But you can acknowledge the fact that, you know what, to be honest with you, I used to be exactly like that. Nobody could curse like me. Nobody could yada yada like me. But, you know, I went to church one day. Somebody invited me to church one day. And I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, I gave my heart to the Lord. What do you mean you gave your heart to the Lord? What does that mean? You know what? It meant that I saw that what I was doing wasn't the best way to live, and I asked God to help me change that way. So what happened? Well, you know what? Started going to church more often, start to read my Bible more often, start to, you know, have questions. All of a sudden, I was interested in this way of life because, sidebar, it is a way of life, right? This is not just a religion that you assign yourself to and sign up that I am a whatever. Christianity is a practice life. That's what, that's what makes us different. Because we're not, we're not perfect. But we are practicing a, a discipline that I know at the end of the day I'm, it's going to be better for me. So I am practicing to hold my lip, hold my tongue, and not say what I always think. What do you mean, yap, Shana? <laughs> Amen, girl. <laughs> so that's my confession. I'm practicing to kind of take control of my emotion. Don't get angry about things right away. Kind of step back. See how this might affect me 10 minutes down the road. But I went to church one day, and I heard this man preaching about a Jesus. Didn't really know more what he was talking about, but he surely sounded happy about it. And I thought, man, I have had some good times, but the moment the times were over, I didn't, I didn't feel happy anymore. But this guy just seemed like he was always happy. I wanted to know, what was he on? You know, it's got to be on something high. And then I, I, I realized that there's a, there's a life that he's living that causes him to be different. And so I started going more often. And then now, I'm a full-born Christian. What do you know? Who would have think it? But at the end of the day, what you are called to be is impactful. Yes. You are called to make disciples of all men, not just the ones that you like. Because God sees a need for them to be saved. Because he knows that once they come in, he can use them to go and get others. You may not be the one to go downtown and, and go in, you know, in, in all these different areas that you're thinking, oh, no, no, that's a little bit too much for me. But if, if somehow, some way, the gospel gets out to that one person and they can go into that area that you feel like it's not for you and they can bring that person bring that light of the word of God there because they'll see them and they say man there's something different about you what what happened to you last night buddy what happened to you now he now becomes a minister of the word in that area so what God is saying to you he's empowering you not just to get up but he's empowering you to shine. Yeah. Don't 
be apologetic for who you are. Let people apologize for their disrespectful way around you. Don't walk into a situation saying, I'm sorry, but I'm a Christian. What is that to be sorry about? What are you sorry? I'm sorry, but I'm a Christian and I don't curse. No, I'm happy to be a Christian and I don't curse. Let them be the one to kind of, you know, check their word and their attitude and their language and what is it that they're saying because I am a holy nation. I'm a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. God has called me. He has called me out of darkness into this marvelous, marvelous light. You know, when you read the word of God, and, and, and for me last night when I was reading that, I'm saying, God, so many times I read the scripture, and we, we say it in, in, in passing, and it becomes just blase, like, we, you know, arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. And that's it. But when I got stuck on that one word, arise. Get up, Joleth. Get up, man. You can do this, girl. Don't, don't, don't feel like you are. You're not less than anybody. If God is telling you to get up, it's because he knows you can get up. Yes. Just make an effort. Change my mind. Just say, you know what? Satan, I believed your lies for so long. For so long, you told me I was a fill in the blank. But the word, the, 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 the entrance of the word of God give it light. I have a different understanding of who I am. I have a different understanding of what future God has in mind for me. So whatever I'm doing that is not replicating or not representing what God is saying, I have to change that. It is a personal responsibility that we all have. This isn't about somebody else doing the work. You have to do the work. Christianity isn't about just giving it over, giving it to Jesus and then walk away. I, th I think we have done you a disservice in, in telling you that just give it to him. What does that mean really? What do you understand that to be? Just give it to Jesus. Yeah, it means, you know what, I'm, going, I'm not going to rely on my way to figure it out anymore, but in me just taking on the mind of Christ, what that does now, it requires to me to be more involved in what is the way of the Lord. What would you have me to do, God? How can you walk with God if you don't understand what is it that he's requiring of you? So for, for those of us who haven't gone back and opened our Bibles or scrolled through a Bible app for a long time, I introduce you to Jesus. He's an amazing God. He is the only way. The way to, out of depression, the, the way out, of, out of, of, of anger, the way out of malice, the way out of all the things that we struggle with. It is through Jesus. There is no other way. I can't come to you with any other thing but Jesus. Go back again. Open the curtains. Let the light come in. Invite him to come in. You see, the, the fastest way for the enemy to lie to you is to keep you in that state of depression and of discouragement. There's a spirit that has fallen upon the church, a spirit of discouragement. Everybody is discouraged about somebody and about something. I included. I'm included in that. But this word, I changed this message at 8.30 last night. I had a message prepared, ready to go, sent off the information, and within 30 seconds, I had to say, don't send it out. Because when the Lord put this in my spirit, I know if for nobody else, he was talking to me. And I figure if he's telling this to me, because every message that comes from here, you are the first audience. The person that preaches that message is the guilty one, first and foremost. So I am not talking at you. I am including myself in this. So what God is saying to me today, that you're just kind of hearing me talk out loud about what God has said to me, get up, girl. Get up. Don't lay down in that state and wait for someone to pick you up and, and find a purpose for your life. You have a purpose for your life. Amen. I have given you a purpose. 
You have something out there to do. And the longer you lay down, is, is the, the more muted and soft and inaudible my voice is. I can't hear from God when I'm in a place of depression. Do you not realize that when I, whenever you're going through a dark times, it doesn't matter how many people come to you and speak to you, it's like, I can't hear you. But the moment you shake yourself, that word that was spoken two weeks ago, all of a sudden become fresh. It's almost like you're hearing it for the first time. Because now your spirit is ready for it. So I am telling you, if you are in that stage right now where you can't hear anything, because you have pulled the covers over, you are so covered in doubt and discouragement and complaining and sadness and, and all the things that are, that are keeping you from hearing the voice of God. A week from now, when you're going to shake yourself, you're going to hear this word. And what you need to do, because now you'll be a week late in getting on with it, you got to take it and embrace it and run with it and do it. Like, let there be a pep in your step, a freshness, because God is speaking to you expressly. Not anybody else. So this morning, you might have thought you came to church because it is what you customarily do. It's Sunday morning, and so I go to church. But God brought you here this morning for this word. Arise. Get up. He has empowered you to do a work. The longer you stay down is the longer it lays dormant. You have a work to do. You have a work to do. A lot of times we look to other people and other things, but God is saying, don't look to, to, to buy out packages and stimulus packages that may never come and the economy changing and we're looking to the White House. Now we're saying, look to your house. Your house, you are the answer to the question that you're asking. What about it, God? I want things to change. Well, then, Gillette, then you change. That's what he says. Lord, change my situation. So what he's saying, you change first, and then your situation will change because you'll see a different perspective. You'll see a different perspective. So in the name of the Lord today, I bring you the message of empowerment Amen. to get up. Amen. Get up off your do nothing and do something. Amen. Enough with the complaining. Enough with the sadness. Enough with the woe is me, the what about me. You know, I, 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 have, I have heard and I've seen, you know, Patients, two similar situations, two people in the same situation, diagnosed with cancer, very, very dismal, you know, uh, um, prognosis, doesn't look very good. One person gets up in the morning, fixes their hair, showers, get dressed, get themselves together as if, you know what, nothing is wrong. The next person lays there. God, why is me? What is wrong, Lord? Where are you? And I call, I paid my dies. I don't know what is happening to me. Jesus, you're doing this, and why are you doing Two people, exact same situation, two different perspectives. Yeah. Why is that? Because one has seen the glory of God. Yeah. One has seen possibility, where the other one just see damnation. When everybody else is looking for a, a bailout, I am seeing an opportunity for me to create income for myself. It's your perspective. Change our minds. Isn't that what we talk about in the word of God? My mind. Let this mind also be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. I'm dying every day to an old stinking thinking. And I'm putting on a new mindset. What I thought about yesterday, I have a different way of looking at it today. I have to. Because if I realize my situation isn't changed, then I have to change. 
You can't keep waiting for somebody external to you to come in and to infuse some kind of change. Change is you. You be that agent. You be the one to go and find out what it requires. What does it take? What is going to, what, what, what do I have to do? You got to be active about your own life. You got to want to do something. So, as I close today, God is requiring us to arise, to get up. When I said the doors of this church, of the church is opening up, people have tried other religion and they don't work. They're looking to come to somebody that does work. He is a deliverer. Yes. He is a way maker. Yes. He is the answer to my problems. And so when they come in, you got to be ready for them. You got to know that all of these, when, when other, you see, we, the, the, the traditional church have been where we already have churched people in church, meaning that they were familiar with some ways of God. You know what I mean? Like, like they, they may not have been 100% committed, but, but at least they knew about God. But you see the new wave that God is bringing in. These are people who never even heard about God. They may come in with, with a tattoo down their face that says, I hate Jesus. How do you minister to that? You have to look in the face of, of somebody and see past the obvious and see their need for God. See their need for God. That is what he's saying. That light has come. You have an understanding of how this will work. Please stand with me. Of the worship team is going to come. Whatever has caused you. To lose your voice, and I mean your influence. Whatever has caused you to stop speaking the truth of who God is. Whatever is keeping you down this morning, you're in the right place. This is a house of prayer. This is a house where deliverance is. We don't have to leave the same way that we came. And again, this message is for first of all me. And you were just listening to me, talking to God about me this morning. But if in all of that, you found something that was, you know what? I can identify with that. I don't want you to feel condemned because I go back to the scripture to say, that in Isaiah, there's the first part about judgment. But here's the part about comfort. Yes. Comfort ye, comfort ye, oh my people. It's almost like he's saying in another way, good news is coming. This is the good news that whatever you were once living in and whatever the cloud that, that enveloped you and, and you couldn't get out of, the way is here. And I continue to say that Jesus, I can't offer you anybody else because I know it was him, it's him who makes the difference in my life. I am not perfect. I'm working towards a lot of changes in my own life. Things you might know about and things you won't even know about. You will never, nobody ever knows about them. And that's okay. Because as he shines the light in your heart, it is for you to change that one thing. Don't feel like, I'm good. I got this. Ain't nothing wrong with me. The word comes to change all of us. We are changed. We are clean. 
by the washing of the word. The word of God is a two-edged sword. It cuts you. Yeah, you might feel, oh man, she surely jabbed that this morning. But within that same word, it heals you. Because when you now know the truth, it frees you from trying to figure out what now? You now know. Why am I struggling so much? And why aren't things happening? And why aren't things changing? Because you're waiting on somebody else, but you are the answer. Isn't that freeing? It frees me to know that somebody else out there isn't, isn't you know, tarrying, isn't late with my package. If I'm expecting a package and the postman to deliver it, I could know within, by the tracking within a certain amount of days when it should show up. But if they say, pick it up at the post office, why am I gonna sit there for days on ends waiting for something that it's within me to go get it? Here is light. It has come to the world. The Bible says that men rather darkness because their deeds are evil. We don't have to cover up. We don't have to live like we've got it right and we've got it all together. That is not the purpose for the word of God. The word of God comes to say, you know what, yeah, maybe you're good with this five, but here's something I want you to work on. So if you can be honest today and say, you know what? Yeah, I've got something to work on. Your courage in stepping out gives somebody else the permission to step out. So I am asking you today, if you find yourself lacking based on the word, come. If you don't know Jesus, this person that I keep talking about, introducing Jesus, come. He's here waiting and wanting to be a part of your life. If you are struggling with the commitment to say yes to Jesus only and not having this duplicit mindset that we're, you know the new religion is Hindu Christianity? Have you heard of that? We have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and we're sprinkling it all together because people are looking for answers. They tried this religion, it didn't work, but they like a little bit of what's happening over there. So they come here and, you know, they're going to try and merge the religion. But he's looking for a relationship with you. A relationship. A real relationship. When you're in a real relationship, it doesn't always, it's not always flurry. Sometimes, you know what, you hear things about yourself that you don't like. Because somebody else has seen a side of you that you might not even have noticed. And here's the word of God that is opening up to us. And it's a mirror of our lives where it's saying that, you know, you're not all perfect. There are some things that I'd like for you to work on. Because God has a purpose for you. He's not just telling you to get up because, you know, he's tired of seeing you down there. He wants you to get up because you've got a work to do. if you want to come and be open about the fact that you've got something that you're struggling with and you like a little bit of help in getting through, the altars are open to us this morning. Not to you. I'm not speaking in like this is about you. To all of us. We're here to bear one another's burden and so we fulfill the law. The law of love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the law that we fulfill. and 